Um, I am so glad that uh, I have a moment or two to chat with this gentleman. He is the retired beat writer for the Detroit Tigers for the Detroit News and just one of the nicest guys I've met in the last couple of years, Lynn Henning, joining us. Hello, sir. Hi, Dave. Yeah, tough uh, 24 hours for everybody since uh, the news we always knew was inevitable but just simply couldn't accept arrived, and it's been uh, tough grief. You know, for most of us growing up in my age group, I'm in my early 60s, uh, we grew up watching Al K. Lime. We went to the old ballpark at Michigan and Trumbull, and, and uh, you know, there's nothing better than a hot dog and Al K. Lime out there in right field. And, and can you talk a little bit about uh, Al K. Lime's baseball, first of all? Yeah, he was a composite of <clears throat> so many separate skills that uh, he, he forged into such an elite player. And uh, that is particularly difficult to do in baseball. And, and I think even with respect to his 3,000 hits, we have to remember that in 1974 when he got that 3,000th, uh, he was only the 12th player in baseball history to have gotten that. And uh, that's... <laughs> by itself an example of in the first 75 years of the game in America where he stood. And, of course, the fact that he played all those years, 22 of them all in Detroit, before free agency really had become um, much of a reality, meant that uh, he was even more Detroit's deity for the ages. And the fact, again, too, that he continued to live in Metro Detroit uh, and really uh, become the presence uh, that he had been as a player uh, simply in a civilian role is another reason why people just didn't want to let go of this man who created such an aura. Well, we could talk for the next couple of hours about the many reasons why people loved Al Kaline. Here's a couple, though, from my perspective. I think the outfielders, you, you know, you are a, a the, one of the best baseball people I know. You just know and love the game so much. But I think the outfielders develop a special relationship with the fans that are not sitting in the most expensive seats in the ballpark. And uh, they get close to the, uh, to the outfielders. The outfielders t- seem to interact with those guys in the bleachers out in the, that part of the ballpark. Is there a special bond? between outfielders and the fans that are near them? That's an interesting perspective, and I think it's true, Uh, definitely. That's one of baseball's great secrets and attractions is intimacy. And you forget that sometimes the the bleacher creatures, so to speak, uh, have even more intimacy with uh, the outfielders. And in the case of Kaline, you would go as much and buy a ticket to see him play right field as you would watch him at the plate. And that is such a unique tribute to make to an athlete or to a big league player. But that was how exceptionally skilled, uh, really how celestially skilled he was, both in terms of his glove and his arm. And you just don't get that combination very often. Then couple it with, again, one of the best bats baseball ever knew, and there's no reason really why he's on the elevation he, he was as an athlete. What made him, I think, really, though, eternal in Detroit, again, the fact he played all those years, always with the Tigers, and then um, the realization that he was still going to be Detroit. He just didn't move off to Scottsdale, Arizona, or somewhere like that. He stayed in Metro Detroit. And he was always around. And probably that was one of the smartest things that Mike Illich did as owner was when he brought uh, Al Kaline and Willie Horton in as front office attaches to the GM. He was going to not only take advantage of their baseball wisdom, and together they had more than a warehouse full of it, but he was going to make sure that these uh, icons Uh, continue to represent the brand and i think uh, that's something that we're mourning yesterday too uh, is really the loss of his identity as a tiger it's now going to be a memory as opposed to a living breathing uh, recollection of all that he has been and that is going to be a really difficult separation i think for fans well you know and i i think of the people of his era 
And uh, even though Ernie Harwell had a couple of years on Al Kaline, it's just that special bond because not only were they around, not only did they interact with people after their career and say very active in the uh, in the organization for Ernie he was working for Al his baseball career ended but he was around the Tigers and had an opportunity to impact so many people and then was in the community impacting so many people Um, you know it's just they are icons not only of their effort on the field and around the game but just icons of this community you think you know, of Detroit, and you think of Al Kaline. I mean, he's as important as Woodward Boulevard. Absolutely. I put uh, George Kell in that same group, sure. uh, too. Um, but those three guys together, uh, and, and again, it's interesting, too, were broadcasters. Of course, George was also a, a fabulous player. But they really kind of become this holy trinity of um, sports and baseball presences in in Detroit. Uh, I think if you want to go beyond baseball, then of course Gordy Howe is there and Joe Schmidt's there from the Lions. But um, I would put yes, Kaline Harwell and George Kell in a grouping and say that's pretty tall cotton to expect to even begin to replicate uh, in in one's lifetime. You're not going to do it. Uh, there there will be others. Um, but it's going to be 100 years before we're going to be able to talk about them uh, in the same vein that we would talk about Al Kaline. And any of the Tigers, but in particular Al Kaline and others that were on the Tigers during the riots and then during the 1968 mm-hmm. World Series championship, you know, that that was a very special time for the team and Al Kaline. Can you talk about that, Lynn Henning? Yes, it was. Uh, we went from the absolute extreme of of urban destruction and violence to a year later uh, having this year of the tiger and it's always been looked at as a way that detroit healed uh, in some respects true as, as far as the desolation that everyone had really experienced the year before and the embarrassment the the humiliation of having your city uh, burning and looked at as um, the epicenter for all that was wrong with urban America right then. And then to have had this incredible party and celebration a year later, uh, that was good. Now, it wasn't going to change the underlying economic dynamic that uh, led to uh, Detroit burning, the, the loss of 262,000 jobs, uh, the move to the suburbs, the, the essentially fencing in of, of African Americans in Detroit. Um, that was what bred the riot, and it wasn't going to be um, certainly countered by a World Series. But it was in terms of a collective city, metropolitan, and statewide celebration that everybody did need. That The fact, too, that it was at the height of the Vietnam War probably was also an antidote um, to what we were experiencing at that point. There was just a lot of turmoil. And uh, Kaline and Mickey Lolich and Northrop and Stanley and Cash and Freehand and Willie Horton and Don Wirt and the whole gang, and Gates Brown, on and on and on, uh, Denny McLean, of course, um, these guys gave Detroit something that they were never, ever going to lose appreciation for. And 52 years later, uh, we haven't. Lynn Henning joining us on the line for just a couple of more minutes. He is retired after an amazing career at the Detroit News following the Detroit Tigers and uh, another great treasure we have here in Detroit. You know, I look at the current coronavirus crisis. It's it's uh, it's on the same scale as far as I'm concerned, uh, not to get controversial, as the era that we went through, the riots, different, but certainly devastating. And for this one, we don't have baseball or any of our sports uh, to lean on right now. But, you know, being hopeless, optimistic, Lynn Henning, I'm hoping that baseball comes back, comes back soon, and uh, helps us heal. Because I think for America, at least for me, when baseball is back, 
I, I'm going to know that everything is okay. What do you think? No, that's a good take on that. I, I think we all agree. Uh, I always said during spring training, I thought the essence of American innocence and pleasure and peace was a grapefruit league game at Lakeland, Florida. Uh, it, it was just um, a, a sort of an Alice in Wonderland kind of an afternoon. Um, it was it was it was beautiful it was upbeat and that game tends to do that to people probably because of the weather and um, certainly because there's just this innate love for this game it's always been escapism and if we can get back to that great uh, i fear just as much that we could lose a football season that is going to be very 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 tough on the masses and I hope this thing uh, subsides before we get to that point. But uh, we're just going to have to wait and hope and pray here that this thing, uh, uh, again, abates and that we can get back to some normal life. And a baseball game right now would represent that uh, pretty beautifully. Lynn, thank you very much. How are you doing? If you don't mind, where are you? And, and is are you okay and healthy? And you and, yes. and those you love are doing okay? Yeah, thanks, Dave. I, I live um, on St. Simons Island, Georgia, with my wife, Susie. It's between Savannah and Jacksonville, and uh, it's a very blessed area, and I'm very blessed. We have our help. Um, we didn't lose any full-time jobs because of our two retirements, and that uh, is has given us a huge edge over so many people who I don't know how they're confronting each day with no employment, uh, the, the desperation and the desolation there just uh, leaves me aching as it does all of us. But I have been uh, gifted and blessed here, and uh, for now, Dave, we'll, we'll hope that our health uh, holds up primarily for everyone and that uh, later on we can recover and rebound and enjoy life that we had known before we will lynn henning we will talk to you on a happier day very very kind of you to be charitable with you on this day thank you for talking to me it helps me and i know it was very helpful for our entire audience today and uh, i just want people to know <laughs> the couple of times that we have met you're just one of those special people that uh, you know, I mean, I I was helping out with a baseball dinner, and just so our audience knows, and putting some screens and audio together for an annual Detroit Tiger baseball dinner, and, you know, I'm just some AV guy, and, and Lynn, you made me feel special, you remembered my name, you came up to me, uh, you, you made me feel like I was a big part of that every time, and you took my call today, you are a special person, you're appreciated, and thank you for joining us, and thank you so much for your contribution to our community, and please extend our condolences to all of the people that I'm sure you're talking to uh, with regard to Al Kaline. Will do, Dave, and thanks for your beautiful words, too. Much appreciated here today as we all deal with some heartache. All right. Lynn Henning, retired from the Detroit News.